Um, so for everyone tuning in again, thank you so much for joining us on this Recipes for Success series. We have a very, very special guest with us here today. Um, he's a Michelin star um, icon whose talent has left a lasting impression on thousands of people across the globe. Over his long and very distinguished career, he has combined cuisines from across the world with grace and ease. He has worked in the UAE, the Czech Republic, um, and in several cities across India, Italy, and so many more places that I'll probably need an atlas and a lot of pins to mark them all for us. His expertise as a skilled chef and as a hotelier at times is what brings about his devotion to the quality of food and, all con and is constantly raising the bar across. His journey through Southeast Asia and Europe is where each dish narrates a tale of his delight, his innovativeness and devotion towards food. So please join me in welcoming a culinary master, um, Chef Devi Prasad. Thank you so much, Thank sir, you. for joining us today. Thank you. We're very excited to us. have you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right, sir. So I thought we could start at the very beginning. Um, you, of course, like many chefs, you also started in the kitchen of your home that you yes. grew up in. Um, that's where most of your journeys began. Uh, from there, of course, you've now traversed to some of the most prestigious kitchens across the world and you've designed menus in some of the most exotic locations. Yes. What has this journey been like? What are, what are some of your earliest memories in the kitchen? And is there any incident over these years that you sort of recognize as your turning point in your career? Yeah. Uh, just allow me to introduce. As everyone knows, my name is Devi. So, you know, I started at the very early years. I started my career with Nobutal Hyderabad Airport in since back 2010. So, 10, 11 in between that. Then I worked there for one year. Then after that, I've known after, after working one year. So, I could have some policies. That time, it was very helpful for me. Then I took a transfer to Nobutal Sector Road where I worked for almost a year. There, my journey started. Started, you know, back to you know, 13 years back, like when I started my career and where I'm sitting now, you know, working with the different chefs, like you know, German, Italian, French, you know, uh, getting their guidance, you know, pushing every single day. There is no bounds for a chef, you know, other chef, like you know, we have to work hard, there are no excuses. So, you know, if you want to achieve your goal, I think you need to push hard every single day. Then, right now, also, we all are doing it, it's all about teamwork. Now, see, Michelin guide, you know, Michelin one star, two star. It's like for us, Adesha, it's an Oscar, you know. It's a not, nothing bigger than that. So it's a very, very outstanding journey throughout the years, over the decades. For me, a fabulous journey. Like, if we have the learning factors, we can achieve many more things. That dedication, that willingness, that's, you know, that dedication that has to be completely spirit in dedication, all I can say is. That alcoholness is has to be there in your dedication because it's like you need to attain to your profession in the culinary, and you can grab, can achieve anything else, whatever you expect. That is such a lovely start to what we were talking about. But where did all of that start? So what is so if you can recall, what are some of your earliest memories in the kitchen? What were one of the first few dishes you learned how to cook? Like, you know, yeah, uh, I will start it not like, you know, 2010. I will start from Gary Rhodes, one of the Michelin's. He is no more. So I started everything else from there. Like, uh, from, I had the basic, I'm a Champas out, so I had the basic. So I need to, you know, fall this little bit myself. So Gary Rhodes and their team they helped me a lot. From the, like, I started as a commie as well, you know. So from going to the scratch, even from the base to cleaning, preparing, everything else, you know. Even if you are washing the vegetables, there are certain key points also how to wash the vegetables. And there are some learning factors as well. That things I think that motivated me. See, I didn't give up. You know, that time I thought of I cannot do that. Then I thought, okay, if you take some time, I will heal it. And then I will learn a lot of things from here. Then I will utilize in my next positions or next property and all that. So time went like that. Lovely. So you started right at the very bottom. You went yes. skill by skill and you made your yes. way up uh, the culinary ladder if we may say but in that process of um, like you said you started with washing the dishes washing the vegetables learning how to cut and then uh, going on you've taken a lot of the things that are unique to the indian cuisine and made them global you've been yes. sort of this um, global ambassador for indian cuisine and taking it uh, like you know across the world um, in your experience, when you've taken Indian cuisine overseas, what has your experience been like in terms of 
uh, bringing about the cultural aspect of it because Indian food is again very cultural. It's very rich in terms of the yeah. story as well. So, so, what has that experience been like for you, taking Indian food to, abroad? To to be honest, you know, uh, wherever you are, if you are if you are here in UAE, you know, to depend on the system, like locally sourced, whatever we can get it locally sourced, seasonal based products. You know, sustainability nowadays, you know, we are more into sustainability, you know, carbon emissions and all that. So now, what is our motto? Even what as my what was my motto? Like you know, wherever I go, I will use that country products, low which is locally sourced, which will make us, you know, like we can attract more and more. Like if you go somewhere else, you will find okay, I am the suppose if you are traveling to Italy, you will find okay, I need authentic Italian food, Correct. which is completely locally sourced. So same thing, like you know, taking this food to outside and you know, just twist, you know, locally sourced with a modern approach. I think people will love it, which we are doing it. Could you tell us about one of these uh, blends that you've made, where you've used uh, like, local you know, products from abroad? Uh, like uh, uh, Badar spice, Arborio rice, <clears throat> for example. The spice, it's all about our coriander, cumin, star anise seeds, bay leaf. This is completely arborio rice, and we will make it at bazaar. Locally sourced is bazaar. Bazaar means market. We say bazaar, but Correct. here we say we cannot say it market spice. It's a bazaar spice. Bazaar spice arborio rice. It's more into Italian rice, arborio rice, and completely Indian spices with, you know, the twist of Emirati spices. That's just completely different. You know, this is for an example. Lovely. So you you sort of take the essence of what the dish is, and then you customize exactly. it based on where you are and. Um, you use the locally sourced ingredients to make it even better. Even if we are in India, like we can make it at a better, beautiful place. You know, we have everything else locally sourced. Why do you use the burrata? We can use the artisanal burrata. This is for an online champions. We can make some burrata, it's like handmade burrata as well. So we can go ahead with this one. So wherever you go, wherever we go, at least we try to find that locally sourced vegetables, you know, locally things that will grab attention even to our customers and to the society to live back to society as well. Lovely. But why is that such an important process of what you do? Uh, sort of integrating the local ingredients and the local... Um... Because, see, <clears throat> because no, no, on, the first things, okay. yeah, like, you know, why we don't depend upon, like, you know, first is, like, transportation charges, carbon emissions, like, you know, like we need to say, like, our nature as well, you know. Why locally based? Because we are wasting, you know, like, suppose we want something else, of course, the air will get polluted, right? So, these are the things that we need to go. Now, we have started, like, you know, a solar-based induction, okay. which will be, we will not use, we will not be using any gas or any electrical things. Solar-based, which will completely more into, more into sustainability. So, these are the, there are three, you know, sustainability things, you know, economical, social, product with sustainability so at least if three things all together i think we can make it wonder that so sounds absolutely can be a, lovely this um but just to pick on what you said in terms of sustainability um a lot of chefs that have spoken to us also and like you said right off the top sustainability is now something that is really gaining traction it's becoming a very important True. aspect of True. the process yes. so we have a lot of culinary students that sort of watch this and of course it goes out to them later on as well right off the top when they're just starting out their careers what are some ways they can make their kitchens more sustainable or for anyone at home as well yes see uh, it's all about you know guest perspective at home it's completely different you know that you know guest perspective just save our nature we can make it better even at home also we can make it we, we can we do like a solar system solar system which is completely affordable nowadays in the market and society so we can make it happen but the now new beginners if there are some students, hospitality students, at least, you know, they want to go, they want to learn, work hard, push, no limits, no, you know, even I started working with 13, 14 hours in a day, so even if I look back, okay, I just did it, but now also the same thing, workflows. So. Lovely, and it's of course a long process, you slowly try and make everything sustainable bit by bit, like you said, you start with so, something solar and then you try and integrate it across the board. Sure. And that is something that we sort of teach a lot of our students at our I am on conferences sure. as well. When we do these sure. three day conferences in about 220 cities across India, um, sure. one of the goals that we also take is combating climate change. And that is one of the actionable goals we also practice. So in that process of us sort of creating these leaders through, like you said, being mindful of the world that we live in, 
you've also done that in terms of your kitchens you've been a leader you've designed menus you've sort of put entire things together so what has your leadership journey in food been like you've you've led multiple teams across multiple countries different yes. cultural backgrounds different culinary backgrounds um so how do you sort of integrate this diversity in your kitchen in terms of being a leader uh, see it was really a beginning was very difficult so nowadays i'm not into like you know we have now see when i i started my career we had 30 nationals uh, in center the saburavi so even moven pig also we had like you know uh, where, where i have worked in those properties multinational people yes. Up, but later it, it become very habituated for all of us to, if you could to guide them there are nowadays you know you know working in kitchen everyone speaks english however if there is a spanish they would love to speak in english so english is a you know basic language for everyone lovely and if there were three leadership tips you'd like to give all our sous chefs in the making watching this what would they be yes can you hear me yes i can can you hear me sir yes, yes so please. i I was just asking if there were three leadership tips that you would like to give all our aspiring sous chefs who are watching today, who will be the sous chefs of tomorrow's yeah. kitchens. What would those three things be in terms of being a leader in the kitchen? Uh, just to be honest with yourself. To be honest. Just to be and make honest with oneself. Yeah. To be completely be honest and learn as much as you can. Even if you're a sous chef, also it's not like I know everything else. So learn each and every day. Like you know, for us, all of us, every day is a learning learning day. So be honest, learning, and be humble as well. So, you know, be humble Lovely. always because, and you know, everything will come across because there will be. I think it's not like you know three things. There will be many things. I think for me, what I have been following to all the years, I think these three things made me motivated. What I am today, I think because of these three factors. Lovely. No I think. So I think yeah. If I could put those in three. three words it would be honesty humility and gratitude so, the three things you should practice as a leader perhaps so for everyone exactly. watching you can note down those three words as sir's uh, mentorship towards being uh, a part of these kitchens but like like going back to what we were talking about food is a immediate reflection of culture and heritage and almost sure. every dish has some meaning whether it's sentimental That's or right. cultural or religious it's it they have multiple meanings to each person um and of course you've been well traveled including southeast asia while asia is sort of known for its exotic flavors and it's uh, for many centuries that has sort of been the narrative but now there's also a, a new race that has come to make our food more instagramable like you know to make it instagram worthy and instagram like you know for the double tap and the comments and the shares so uh, do you think that is sort of diluting the cuisine or is it making it better creating more opportunity no, for everyone I think the second one, the creating opportunities for everyone else. I think you know, taking a good picture, posting on Instagram. I think it's fine enough. You know, we also do that. We were not, you know, when I started my career, in, I was not into more into Instagram because oh, what is that? It's all about you know. But it's really good. You know, it shows your you know what you what your capability shows, your work shows. I mean, it's all practical things. You know, how do you do that? I think it's I think it's extra curricular activities. I think it can be added into that. it's really good have you noticed any changes sort of in the industry as at large with the advent of social media because um like you know cross cultural learning has become so much easier think, like you were saying just now i think you know we get a lot of business through the social media we cannot blame on that because you know no one knows us without you know there are no such instagram twitter facebook everyone will get to know that and this is our you know source of income also even for all every restaurant there in kochala You know all the hotels also because social side gives us a lot of you know benefits just to recognize in the society in the country itself and across the globe. I think it plays a huge role. So it's helped chefs a lot, and I think yes. for all of us as uh, people like me who can't cook but prefer eating, yes. looking at other people cook on Instagram is always fun sure. because it sort of inspires me to try new dishes. Yes. But speaking of um, putting these dishes together. Mm -hmm. um, setting up a restaurant is of course a very very intensive process there are there are certain difficulties that come with it there are certain challenges that come in sort of setting up a restaurant curating menus curating uh, like you know complete packages for people 
for all the aspiring restauranters here, what are sort of some of the common mistakes you think people make in setting up a restaurant that they can avoid? Uh, see, uh, like all I can say is, you know, you know, to see the markets, you know, what markets needs in, you know, where you are best in, like you need to, you need to have a proper evaluation, you know, what exactly you are doing, what reason are people are accepting. That I think that is the best thing, you know, like if you are there in somewhere and place where the people, their palate, you need to know their palate, you need to understand their palate. It's not everyone will have it, like Western product, Western dishes. So you need to adopt those, you know, cultural things, you know, in order to get that business. You need to get, you know, uh, upset because you need to see what market makes it. By seeing the market trends, you can go ahead with this one. True. And of course, another thing that has been happening recently with the whole idea of sustainability is also there's been this boom globally in terms of vegetarian and veganism that has also sort of taken over the entire conversation and is becoming a so, very popular trend now. Hot topic. Yeah. So at all of our Ayaman conferences for about 13 years, whether it's in India or in Japan or Montevideo or anywhere, we've made it a practice to only serve vegetarian food. But now, of course, it's becoming a much more global trend with veganism becoming a thing. So from a perspective of a chef and as somebody who's, of course, um, ahead of all is understanding this from a macro level, how do you think this has changed the culinary industry and how do you see it developing in the future? Uh, see, now, even the Europeans also, even I'm facing most of the Europeans, they're, you know, converting, okay, their preferences, like, you know, they want to be more vegan and vegetarian, so it's all about personal preferences, and it's all about emotions, they think, okay, we don't want to kill animals, it's all about, you know, personal views, you know, most of the people, it's not like, if everyone will be vegan or vegetarian, I think industry one day, we will change it to a different person of industry. <laughs> understand so even i do first every single day like you know when i have customers here okay we want some completely vegan what do you have in a vegan chicken okay we have vegan chicken we can make it in a soya we make it out of it so we have in a dishes also now menu so we incorporated with uh, something completely we so twisted in it so is there any one such uh, incident or story that you can tell us where you sort of come up with one, one of these dishes, anything we from have, your journey that a dish that is put out, yeah. I think in the current company, in my current company, I have in, I have created one menu. It's completely vegan dishes, completely vegan oh. menu. And we have okay. vegetarian set menu as well. We have daily stations and we do all like, you know, every two months we do, you know, six hands and four hands dinner with the Michelin sets. So last time we did it, like if you go to my place, you can, you can get to see it. Like I did it with the six hands menu, two chefs from Europe and from my side as well. So one chef from pastry, one main course, one salads. It was amazing. So yeah, it's a guest choice and we need to work with the guest patrons. So it's not like a completely way, it's not which some people will adopt it, some people will have it, some people will have a different preferences. So we need to act according to that. Okay. And how do you think Indian food is sort of played into this? Because if we actually think about it, a majority of Indian vegetarian dishes are also vegan. But if we conventionally think about what comes to mind when someone says vegan food, normally Mediterranean cuisine, or like you said, the more European aspects of it come into light. But sure. there is a ton of very tasty Indian foods that are also extremely vegan and match all of everyone's standards. So how do you think Indian food can further get incorporated into the idea of vegetarianism and veganism globally? Yeah, but yeah, and globally, I have seen that, you know, many of the Indian restaurants, they're trying to do it in a modernized, like, you know, Indian techniques with a modern presentation, because we have a couple of Michelin star restaurants here in the UAE, so they're trying to, you know, playing with, it's like, suppose in Golgotha, but they're trying to just put a hole in it, some masala is in on top, some nice caviar and all that. So it's really nice. They are trying. We are following the modern trends and modern approaches. So it's in a very good response. Also, any European they have a very good response on that. And I think with chefs like you, we should be happy that Indian food will always reach the tables of everyone across the world. So. So just before we um, sort of move to the last fun segment that I had planned, I had one last question for you, which is. What is your, what are your short, short recipes for success and what are some of the ingredients that you put in your journey to success that you would like to tell uh, all the young people watching? I just took it, my secret recipe for my home kitchen, my mom's kitchen. So I took out all the spices. I just made my own spices, secret spices when it comes to 
you know, like lamb dishes or chicken dishes. I have my own secret spices because, you know, everything is from your mom's kitchen. You will get a lot of inspiration from there as well. So there are a lot of herbs, there are a lot of spices. We can make it. But that key things that I got inspired from my mom's kitchen. So very early years, so I used to go to the kitchen where my papa used to help me more in the kitchen. Then I got to know, okay, these spices, it's nice. Fennel is nice. You know, cumin is nice. Then, okay, let's play around that. But I didn't know that I will become chef one day. But Lovely. It's all about, you know. And is there any piece of advice you'd like to give to all the young people watching? Um, to sort of to map, because the culinary world is still something very new for a lot of people to sort of map their journeys. Yes. And you're someone, like you said, you started right at the bottom and you've made, you worked your way up. So what are some pieces of advice you'd like to give to all the aspiring chefs watching this? Yeah. All I can say is my advice will be, you know, you don't have to be frustrated, you know. I know industry is hard. Yeah, people will say, oh, nine hours, okay, let's eight hours, nine hours, ten hours. Yeah, you need to give your time. Take your time to learn and learn. And back. your basic has to be more strong, you know. If you want to learn and polish yourself, your basic has to be there. For young aspiring chefs, like, you know, it takes time. It's not like overnight tomorrow you can be a very good chef. But it takes time, three, four years. Some people will take three years, four years, five years. Some people will take more than 10 years. It's all about how you learn, learn and drive. Even if you learn properly, then you can drive it. You are a driver too. So you don't need to get frustrated because if I would have frustrated at the earliest, I would have given up as well. So at least just stay calm, learn as much as you can, work hard. That's it. And be passionate about your cooking. If you think, no, cooking is a, uh, it's a chef being a chef, uh, it's fine. We can, everyone can be a chef. But yes, but you need to have proper techniques. Love. You need to learn. And if I can just sum that up for everyone, if there are a few key words that we can all take away, it is to be honest with yourself, to remain humble, to practice gratitude. Sure. gratitude. And like Sir just said, to reflect and sort of, um, you know, just be true to yourself in this process and put sure. in the work to hone your skills and learn as you go. And um, if we can end, sir, we have a fun segment, which we like to call our rapid fire. Sure. So I'll just sure. read out a bunch of words or phrases and you can tell us the first thing that comes to your mind. Sure. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so the first one is vegan meat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, food. Uh, Brasole. Okay. The best dish that you've created? Uh, thari, lamb thari. Your, your favorite cuisine? Italian. Italian. Uh, after a long day, what is your comfort food? Uh, avocado tati tati. Okay. Um, young people, youth? To be... To be a star. Lovely. The next one is India. Of course, I love India. And the last one is our organization, which is IIMUN. What comes to mind when I say that? It's completely, I have been through that. And I'm so lucky, you know, just to be part of it and the competition. I have been through it. So, like, so honestly, like, it's my pleasure to be part of it. And many of the people are watching and mentors like you, you, can, you are a truly motivated. So just people who are listening, like, you know, the message, what you have given to them and let's fair enough. The people will should work for it and, you know, to get the success, you know, success, as you said, it's even as I said, it does not come overnight. You need to have patience. So just wait for the right time. The time will come. No worries. Your time is there. So people think, oh, I, I get frustrated, so many problems and all. Time is there for everyone. Every single full time is there. Just wait for it. Right, sir. Thank you so much for taking Thank the time so to much. join us here today. Okay. Um, there is a lot to take away, like you very thankfully summed up just now. Patience and perseverance um, is required for success in the long term. Sure. And in the middle every day to practice honesty and humility and gratitude in our lives. Gratitude. So thank you so much for joining. We're thank very, you so very much. grateful thank you could join Thank us you. Today. Okay. And